we bring on Stu Bergier, who is on uh, the Glenn Beck program. He's on uh, the news and why it matters. And they're, uh, the Glenn Beck guys are hanging around the studio this week. And I love Stu. He's got a great perspective. So let's bring him in. Stu. Ah, thanks for having me, man. So, Quite an honor. Quite an so, honor. You, well, you know, you were just around here. You figured, mm-hmm. oh, gosh, I've got five minutes free. All right, right. I'll go do Noel's <laughs> show. That's fine. Uh, because I was on your show yesterday. Yeah, yeah. The News and Why It Matters. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was a, a ton of fun yesterday. Yeah. And especially in this news cycle, I'm actually beginning to question the premise of your show. Yeah. Which is that the news matters. <laughs> yeah. I don't really... Uh, yeah. I'm not convinced at all. We've got 35-year-old accusations. We've got the president's Mario Kart. We've got, I, don't, I don't need any of that. It's disturbing. It's very disturbing. The news and why it's disturbing is the, the new news, title. <laughs> the news yeah. and why you should pay attention to something else. Yeah. Because there are other very important news stories today. Yes. I would say mm-hmm. after the Mario Kart and after the, the most important news stories are Bert and Ernie, the mm-hmm. well-known Sesame Street puppets, mm-hmm. there's a big debate on between different writers and creators of them as to whether or not they're gay. <laughs> Coincidentally, I don't know mm. why this is, but in my notes for our interview, whoever taped this put a gay mm-hmm. pride sticker on there. So we have their vote. Are Bert and Ernie gay? <laughs> uh, Bert and Ernie, um, you know, they're a wonderful team. Mm-hmm. And they've, they've provided us so much uh, happiness for so long. Uh, I don't think they're gay. And here's my um, premise for this. Okay. Um, the guy who created them said they're not gay. <laughs> And is that all the, the evidence the, you that, have? I, I, well, no, I can keep. I can go deeper. Okay, um, they're made of felt. <laughs> okay, uh, most gay people are not made of felt. Now, That's I don't true. want to overgeneralize. Made of usually, right. or beads, or it's something. <laughs> right, something <laughs> shiny. Right, felt isn't shiny at all. That's true. Um, puppets don't usually have any genitals. Mm. Um, so it's difficult for them to engage in any sexual activity. You know, activity I don't know. Whatsoever. I've never taken clothing off of a puppet. Are you some kind of Brett Kavanaugh over here that uh, you're <laughs> checking out puppets? There was an your... incident at a party. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't want to go too deep ago, into it. During uh, the Lincoln administration. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, Miss Piggy was involved. Uh, it was not pretty. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting thing is that we have to come up now with sexuality for puppets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, for the guy, I was, it was actually kind of sad. The guy who, uh, who kind of brought this to everybody's attention, he said that he was a writer, I guess, for many years. Yeah. Uh, for Bert and Ernie, which I thought they came up with all their own material, and I'm a little frustrated about I know. That. It's awful. They have a whole staff. Yeah, exactly. This, this guy was Mark Saltzman, I think. <laughs> Mark his Saltzman. Yeah. And he said uh, he always considered them gay, and he wrote them as if they were gay. Um, and he modeled them after his own relationship, and he's gay. Hmm. Um, but I thought that was really sad because Bert and Ernie sleep in separate beds. <laughs> Is this guy, what? what's happening at the house? I'm like, into I, it. I, I think he's got the right idea. Yeah. I want to stretch out. I don't need somebody rolling over onto me. And I, Separate beds is fine. Separate California kings, I, I'm into Yes, it. well, that's the problem. I think they had twins. <laughs> oh, and you, 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 Like, you're an adult. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know you're on a kid's show. Mm-hmm. I believe Bert and Ernie were full, full grown. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that's they were right. ever getting any taller. <laughs> Uh, so I, you know, I think the the twin bed thing was a little rough. It, it's just a, it's just like I, I we can't you know Glenn's book he's out here to promote his book and it right. to outrage and it's like this is the typical thing the typical nonsense we mm-hmm. have to get excited about every day and it's you know on that point because I I got the book yesterday. Mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying it so far. This is uh, okay. people might have seen Glenn Beck was out. We were smoking cigars. He was puffing out of a bong <laughs> yesterday, yeah. and uh, but there is this constant need to politicize everything, to be outraged at everything. And when it comes to Bert and Ernie being gay, of course the the reasonable person would just say, like, "Are you kidding me?" But but there is a question too, culturally, why does every friendship have to be gay now? Like you know when guys are buddies, they're like, "Oh man, I, that was really fun last night." No homo. <laughs> you can say no, right or no, I'm, we're not gay. And you just, you actually, I mean, I get it can be funny or whatever. It is weird that Bert and Ernie lived together for so long. Yeah. But it, what happened to friendship? Like, can't people just be guys, be platonic friends, and not everything be very sexual? I don't go out of limits. Say yes. I think they can be platonic friends. I feel like I have several now. I, they may make a move on me at any time. That's so true. You maybe, might make a move on them. Maybe, I don't know. Who right? knows? Maybe we're Two drinks and a wink away from making any kind of decision. <laughs> you, you never know. know. Uh, and it's like I don't know. Like I. I can understand, like, there's part of me that understands this, right? Like, if, you, if you've been around for a long time and, and, and you're gay and you feel like you haven't been accepted, you're looking maybe for cultural things that you can kind of attach yourself to. But you don't get to force the creative abilities of, of the people who created these things. I mean, you know, the, the, you know Frank Oz, is, he came up with this. And he, he has an opinion about who these people are. They're good friends. You know, it was at a time in which we didn't try to force sexuality into kids' shows. Mm-hmm. Ch- children's programming wasn't the target for 
uh, gay or straight uh, sexuality. That wasn't a great place for it. And I feel like in reality, everybody knows this, right? Right. But like we have to wake up every day and to find our reason to get through the day, to give ourselves a little bit of energy, a little bit of juice, to make our lives have a little meaning. We got to get something to get pissed off about. And, I, you know, that's nonsense. It doesn't make me happy. Right. Uh, I don't know anybody it does make happy in the long term, uh, long run. And I, I would rather go back to a time in which, you know, I have kids. I have two small kids, uh, five and seven. And they're in, even though they, I don't think they watch, I don't think I've ever seen them watch Sesame Street. But like, you They know, watch the Michael Knowles show, but they don't watch yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, we just put Knowles on repeat all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and they learn a lot. They learn a lot. They're getting. <laughs> they're, they're saying interesting Where, words. Where'd you learn that? Yeah, no, exactly. I, I gotta destroy uh, the television. <laughs> I think. Uh, but you know, it's it's. I'd rather have them. That's something you want to teach your kids. You want to walk through that journey with them. You don't need that taught to them by Sesame yeah. Street. Uh, all you know, if we're, they're going to be taught by a puppet, um, I, I'd rather have control of what the puppet says. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and, right. Uh, and there is this part of outrage culture, which is. Why are we always outraged over these sex things, the Stormy Daniels yeah. and whatever? I think in part, it's not because we've suddenly discovered sex. You know, people have known about sex for yeah. a long time. Mm-hmm. It's just that it's such a basic and fundamental passion yeah. that we just focus on it to the exclusion of other things because we're not capable of thinking of other things. All people want to talk about in politics is gay marriage, gay sex, abortion, Roe versus Wade, this, that, and it's all yeah. uh, Donald Trump's flings with porn stores. It's all uh, sex, sex, sex all the time. I think it might have to do with people not reading books or not having yeah. other interests or yeah. not uh, maintaining other sorts of relationships. Right. I mean, like, it, it's uh, it's hard to get people's attention, right? You go into this, uh, books are long. They're hard. They've got words. They're all over the place. There's almost no pictures in many of them. Oh, it's no. It's not, yeah, it's don't terrible. Don't tell me no, the Glenn's book true. doesn't have any pictures. Oh, you don't want to see the pictures in Glenn's book. You, know, <laughs> you never want to see pictures of Glenn. That's a rule I always live by. Um, but yeah, it's true. It, it actually takes time. And I think this happens so much in politics, right? Like where, you know, you can go through how, I mean, how many times did you go, we go in deep into, you know, into the Obamacare bill. Mm-hmm. You're going deep into all these like really in-depth, you know, pieces of, of legislation that they're passing. And you get about halfway through some of these sentences and you you feel like you, you look up and like just everyone's like days, they're, they're on their phones. They've, they've gone to, you know, they're playing, you know, Candy Crush, whatever yeah. they're doing. <laughs> Um, and sex can easily redirect that mm-hmm. conversation. I mean, you know, the Kavanaugh thing, like, they tried. They tried going down the road of, uh, well, he's, uh, you know, what did they try? They tried he's abortion. Partisan, they tried birth, birth he's, yeah, control. He'll overturn the right. Yeah, right. Like, they went through all, no one was trying, const- and they weren't saying, hey, this guy doesn't know the Constitution. They weren't saying, hey, this guy's not qualified. They were like, hey, you know, 36 years ago, this guy may have done something at a party, which we don't know when it was or where it was or, you know, who was there. Or and she, you know, she doesn't right. really remember it. Yeah, she doesn't really know. remember it. And it's I like, don't know. get rid of him. And, 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 because that was the only thing that could get anyone's attention. If you're talking about the things a Supreme Court justice should actually be judged on, you get no audience. Mm-hmm. And it's frustrating. You know, I mean, right. I, I, this happens way too much, and it happens on both sides at some level. But the media in, in particular, like, they will take every Donald Trump tweet and try to make the biggest thing in the world out of it. And it's like, you know, what is he doing? Like, they, they, they'll make this big thing about how he's so easy on Russia, right? right. Um, you know, ignore his tweets. Ignore what he says. Just ignore look at the actions of his, his administration. Actions. He's been tough on Russia. Mm-hmm. Sanctions all over the place. Much like, tougher than Barack Obama. Much tougher than Barack Obama. And, you know, there's no recognition of that mm-hmm. in the media, or at least it's very rare. And I think it's because, well, a tweet is like the ultimate journalist lazy tool, right? Like, but think about, like, journalism 20 years ago. You'd have to go to a place, and you'd have to find people who were there, <laughs> right. and you'd have to ask them questions, and they'd blather on about nothing for a while, and then at the very end, they may say something that you have to pull out for TV. Now, go to Twitter, search key terms, Find someone who says they were there, put it on the screen, your quote's done. You didn't even have to walk out of the yep, room. Yeah, that's right. And I feel like that's that. now we're to the point where even with something like the presidency of the United States or any cultural issue, they just go on and they'll find a few tweets to support their case. And, mm-hmm. and that's it. It's, it's honestly just lazy, but it, it, it reinforces you know, that addiction that we were talking about. People are just bouncing back and forth looking for that. Be- because outrage is lazy. Anybody can yeah. do it. Anybody can pretend to do it. And how dare you? How, d- how, how dare, dare you? I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> offending all of the outraged <laughs> Americans. And, and there are... I've noticed this on Twitter. I, I, I can, I'm perfectly happy going hard, fighting for your team, fighting for your guys, not letting them railroad Kavanaugh, yeah. you know, being a pugilist, punching <laughs> back twice as hard. I'm all into that. Mm-hmm. But one should have some perspective, right? I always find on Twitter, if I'm genuinely getting angry, you have to get off Twitter. Yeah. You have to shut it down. Yeah. Nothing good will come of that. But that seems like it's the whole media cycle now. It's all of the... Uh, 
certainly on the left. It's true on the right as well. Uh, and so if, if our, now if our news cycle has become outrage and tweets and memes, I want to focus on those last two parts, the mm -hmm. tweets and the memes and the internet of it all. Mm -hmm. In the European Union right now, they are debating the important issues. Not Russia encroaching <laughs> on their borders, not the Islamic invasion, or the, the 65 terrorist attacks in the last four years. Oh, None no. of that. No, that's not No, true. no. No. They're going to ban memes. They're going to ban internet <laughs> memes. This is a real thing. They're debating Article Amazing. 13 mm -hmm. to censor internet memes. What is this about? Well, I mean, they say it's about copyright, mm -hmm. right? And because, uh, you know, uh, if you have an, uh, a meme of the office, well, then the office really owns that still shot that you're posting mm -hmm. and putting a print on. I mean, but that seems to be just a scam, right? Like, the, you know, first of all, I think we've learned over the years that trying to censor content on the internet does not go well. Right. Um, you know, you lose control of your industry quite quickly when you do that. Um, but... Uh, it, this seems to have more of a political motive, motive right? Like, the, you know, they've seen the effectiveness of this stuff. It does, it does move people. In, in, a, in a way, I think going back to the previous conversation, it's sad, right? Like, you yeah. shouldn't be moved politically by a meme. Um, but I think... I don't know, but have you seen, like, <laughs> really, really, really good memes? Well, when they're really, know, like, really, really good, yeah, then I'm in. You know. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's kind of ridiculous, right? You should be moved by a book. You should be moved by a Supreme Court argument. You should not be moved by a picture from Parks and Rec. Well, what, about, what about the one of the guy with the girl, and he's looking at the one girl, but he's holding <laughs> the hand of the... I mean, I don't know, that's very convincing. Oh, that's an exception. That's you bring true. up the one <laughs> exception. <laughs> yes, that is... Hard that. cases make bad law. I yeah. feel like our new constitution should just be that picture, <laughs> and we should just put, like, freedom on one side <laughs> yeah. and communism yeah. on the Tyranny. other. And that's just the whole thing. Maybe if someone would read it, then it would be interesting. Uh, but yeah, I think that like they've seen the success of this and how they can get people to you know move uh, really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times to ideas that weren't really considered, uh, you know, kind of in the Overton window of politics before. Right. Uh, and uh, that scares an organization like the EU, which I would argue should ban itself and just go away. Mm -hmm. um, right. It, of course. Right. You know, like that. That would be my uh, idea. But it's like. They want to make sure that they have that control. They, they, you know, these things that come up, they're going to try to push them down however they can. You know, that the closer they are to control over these arguments, the better and more secure they feel. And I think it's connected to the outrage. I think the, the two yeah. are, because where the memes come from, the reason I, I really defend the memes, I don't know, if, I mean, especially the one with the guy and the girl. Yeah, well, that one, of Especially that one, <laughs> is because they're funny. And they, they yeah. take on political issues with humor. They might be shallow, they might be uh, partial, but they are funny. And the reason that they're allowed to be funny, the reason that the right is able to take a hold of humor, is because the left is so angry and shrieking and pink hat yeah. no yeah. you know because they're doing that right now because they are living in such a fantasy uh, we're allowed to make fun of them and it and it works it's really funny and so i i see this move by the eu which is the archetypal tyrannical yeah. you know oh, like uh, octopus body as as a representative of the left which is trying to censor all of that censor that humor shut it down shut down twitter accounts shut down conservative speakers on campuses. Uh, I don't think that works for them in the long run. I don't think that censorship is a winning platform. It never is. I mean, you know, look at Mubarak. You know, he sh shuts down the entire internet and, uh, you know, he's now no longer there, right? I mean... <laughs> it's it, a polite way to put it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's one way. Um, but it's true. I mean, I think, like, trying to shut people away from ideas draws them to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think... It's it's more it, it, in the long run. It gets you to a better place if people are debating these things uh, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that ha creates more depth. But you have to get people in the door. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, we did this going back. You know, you know, I'm on the Glenn Beck program as well, and it's like we know this is kind of the philosophy of the show from its very beginning, which was the fusion of entertainment and enlightenment. Mm -hmm. and it's like you go in there and like you're going to grab the people at some level with you know, being silly and and having fun with these things. Yeah. But like I, I would imagine a lot of people came to real. Uh, political positions and understanding of, of our foundational principles that started with memes. You yeah, know, if right. you're 15 years old, you're not going to go freaking read the Constitution. You're not going to care what Ben Franklin was yapping about. But if you you, know, you get a meme and it's funny and then you kind of brings you to, you know, a story and then it brings you to, uh, you know, something where they link into to something with a little bit more depth. And Pretty soon you're reading Edmund Burke. Yeah, exactly. You're right yeah. there. <laughs> so, I mean, I think, I do think that that's a process that actually happens now. I have this uh, tendency to when these new things, you know, like when, t when Twitter starts, it's like, to me, it's just like, why, why, you want to do 140 characters? This seems ridiculous. I liked, this is silly. I mean, at the beginning,
beginning when blogging started, like yeah. that was it was something that you kind of would like mock, and like it's the same thing with talk radio. I right. mean, the, the mainstream media looked at that and said that's stupid, but over time these things turn into something real. It really moves people. It can really in, uh, engage people, and and then that's positive as long as you take that extra step afterwards where yep. you actually learn what the foundation is. And you know, hanging out with you guys the last few days, obviously we've known each other yeah. longer than this week, uh, but it's been so fun. I yeah. mean, it's really, really fun, fun going on the show. I always I always forget how funny Glenn is too because I think of Glenn as this kind of serious guy, but like really really funny. Yeah. Uh, so where because you're you're everywhere. You're on the News and Why It Matters. You're on the Glenn Beck program. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you all over the blaze? Where, where what is the easiest way? Yeah. Tell people go here now. Uh, well, I would definitely if on Twitter we're, since we're there at World of Stew would be a great place to go follow. Uh, you know, obviously Facebook and everything else. But the blaze, yeah, News and Why It Matters. Uh, Glenn Beck program every day and uh, Wonderful World of Stew is another show there's a lot of stuff out there that I think you'd like on that as well so check it out alright Stu thanks for being here man thanks I appreciate it it was awesome thanks good to see you thanks a lot